I mean, he's inspired GMC to revive the Hummer brand. So, you know, thank you, Elon. <laughs> um, That's but, where I was going with it. Is, is this a segue or can I can I yes. add one more little thing? But, go ahead. <laughs> okay, go let ahead. me add one more <laughs> thing and then I'm going to segue. Segway back denied. Talk, we'll come back and talk about Hummers. Because, <laughs> so, uh, so on this note about uh, Starship and all that stuff, Michael Sheets from uh, CNBC, I believe, who is, is affiliate. He's he, Michael Sheets has just been absolutely blowing me away lately. He started off as like a you know a space reporter on the beat, and I'm kind of like, and he and he CNBC made him a full time space reporter, not just a reporter covering space. Like his job is like to record. That's pretty cool that the mainstream media is like, you know, hiring people full time just to cover space flight now because it's become that big of a thing. And, you know, at first, I don't know, it's not, I just would see his stuff and I'm like, whatever, whatever. And he's been diving into really cool things now and doing a fin just phenomenal journalism that I've just been, and staying on top of it really, really well. So Michael Sheets, I just have to say that you're just kicking butt. Um, <laughs> but this is an interesting note here. He said, Morgan Stanley says that some of the client feedback the firm received about its SpaceX deep dive report last week showed there were some investors that believe Starship could be a more significant opportunity versus Starlink, while other other investors viewed Starship as speculative. Hmm. And I feel like, okay, for me, so I, I, I said this, and, and then he pushed back a little bit, but I, I do like, I love his pushback. So I said, the fact that there's even a debate, which will be more profitable and, and impactful, says a lot. We all know Starlink will print money. The idea that Starship has that kind of potential, too, is bonkers. That the, the investors are actually seeing the concept, um, the, you know, that, that they're actually, even, that they're seeing the potential, the financial potential of Starship as much as Starlink. But, and he said... Just to push back a little, Star Starlink will only be profitable if can if it can overcome several significant cost hurdles mm. first, which is the point Morgan Stanley made in its report. As the firm doesn't expect Starlink to generate yeah. free cash flow until twenty thirty three wow. is their estimate for generating free cash flow. I think there may be being a little bit short on how many millions of people will sign up day one. Literally, first off, you have the internet service providers of this country uh, are just terrible to begin with. There's not like a good one, right? They all suck in one way or the other. And so you have that. So you have a longstanding, I hate my current provider. It's a monopoly. So I have no other choice, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have Elon and what he's able to do just with his own uh, personality and his own following. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think you'll literally get, you know, millions of people signing up immediately as soon as it's possible. So I think they're, well, you know, w was it Morgan Stanley or someone else that said there would only... Uh, the, the cell phone market worldwide would only ever be like 900,000 people or something, right? <laughs> hmm. But, but like, like cell phones are really, you know, the future. To, to counter that point that we're somewhere over like 500, 600 satellites, we still need, realistically, we're maybe... Thousands. Yeah, we need yeah. thousands. So there's still, and you know, most of those are it, it taken, it's taken about a year to get to get most of those really now. So at this pace, and they're at a fast pace in the rocket world, it's, it would take years, you know, five, six years to really be fully operational to the point where it's consumer ready. Um, yeah. You know, and that's at a good pace. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're able to pick things up. But there's look at how many variables so are in rockets. Weather they were saying that they'll be profitable by 20, whatever, 30, 30 something. Ca free cash flow. Yeah. As in of like as of today, or or did that mean like as if they launched their service today, it would take you know twelve fifteen years to go be profitable? They just said so the firm doesn't expect Starlink to generate free cash flow until twenty thirty three. No, oh, well that's tomorrow in this space. You're talking about building a worldwide internet infrastructure. Yeah, that's that's not. A but big deal. couldn't there be another technology that comes in between now and then that makes whatever Starlink, you know. The one who who's going to want gigabit service in ten years? You know that could be yeah yeah five yeah, G is supposed to. I think that's the argument. Is like if it really does take thirteen years, you know, to mm. really be to the point of free cash flow. That that is that's that is kind of risky. I would I would say that they'll start making money on it pretty, or at least not making money, but you know, generating revenue um, sure. in the next two or three years, and then you know I don't know. We'll see. Mm. I. But wasn't Starlink supposed to pay for Starship? Pretty much, yeah. Like, wasn't that the idea? Yeah. And now they're saying that Starship might actually be a bigger opportunity than Starlink. 
in, in 13 years or whatever. I, and I, I would agree with that. I think in the big, big, giant picture, Starship is absolutely the game changer. Like, Starlink is a cute little... Cool. Well, what about but Starship is a game changer? The fact that you're putting 150 tons to orbit, potentially 10 times cheaper than we're getting 20 tons to orbit now. You know, orders of magnitude, lower costs. Is that what they're, they're saying, though? Or are they saying the whole intraplanetary travel thing? I don't even I don't know anything about the report, unfortunately. Um, yeah, okay. I think it's an internal report that he got his hands on, um, and I I don't I don't think anyone's really looking at intraplanetary transportation as being like. Am I a, saying that intraplanetary, like in inter, the planet, it's but interplanetary. going to space? Interplanetary uh, infrastructure would be yeah, like interplanetary would be to another yeah. planet. Yes, intraplanetary would be same planet, <laughs> but it's drilling to the core of the planet. <laughs> <is> the, <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.